followers. Huh? No, no, then. Well, you said they follow you. Now, look. You see, this is, you are making mischief, my son. You, you are making mischief. What you have to do is, look, give examples. Now, if you were a Christian, I would have been happy to deal with you as a Christian. Because if you said I made mockery, I said this is what the Bible says. This is how the Bible put it. He said, oh generation of wipers, you whited sepulchres, you wicked and adulterous generation. Now if that is offensive to anybody, I said these are not my words. I never spoke like that. I never uttered words to that effect. You see, that you fools, you hypocrites, you brood of snakes. You know who's talking like that? Jesus in the Bible. He says, you brood of snakes, you wicked and adulterous generation. Do you know all that? Do you know that Jesus speaks like that? The Christians say, this is how Jesus spoke. You know, he insulted his mother. He said, woman, what have I to do with you? Do you know that? Am I making a mockery or is the Bible making a mockery of the man? I want to know. If you were a Christian, I could have asked you. I said, look man, you don't know your own book. I am only quoting you what he's supposed to have said. He said, do not throw the bread of the children to the dogs. Now you must come forward, the Christian must come forward and say, look, Jesus never said any such thing. I am making a mockery of his religion. I said, look, this is what Jesus said. He said, do not throw that which is holy into dogs. Do not throw pearls before swine. Am I making a mockery of you making a mockery? If you are a Christian, I say, you are making a mockery of Jesus. This mighty messenger of God, whom we believe that he was born miraculously, am I right? He was born miraculously as a Muslim we believe, without any male intervention. This book gives us two genealogies of Jesus, Matthew and Luke. They give you 66 fathers and grandfathers to a man who had no father. Now I want to know who's making a mockery, the Quran or the Bible? 66 fathers and grandfathers to a man who had no father. And out of the two lists given by Matthew and Luke, there's only one name common to the both lists. Joseph the carpenter. And he's not supposed to be there. Because he's not the actual father of Jesus. Am I right? He was a Muslim. But he is supposed to be the father of Jesus Christ. And Luke says so. Luke says, and Jesus happened to be about 30 years of age when he began to preach. Who being the son of Joseph. Who being the son of Joseph. That's what Luke says. In the words are there, after that in brackets, as was supposed. And if you ask any Christian scholar, any Christian scholar, what are these words doing in brackets? They will tell you that Luke in his manuscripts, in the Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Vaticanus, Codex Alexandrianus, these words are not there. These are the words of the editors. So Luke said that Jesus is the son of Joseph. As was supposed are your words, man's words. Who is making a mockery of Jesus? The Muslim or the Christian? So you see, you as a Muslim, it was very, very unfair. The unkindliest cut was from you. I would have preferred a Christian to say that, then I could have presented all these things to him. Coming back to the comparative study and comparison between the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Jesus, last long. One aspect of comparison you didn't give is I'd like to ask your opinion on that comparison. And that is when we, as a general or majority of Muslims, believe that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross. And he is with God, God raised him, and he is sitting on the right hand side of the God, and he will come back to lead the Muslims to a total victory. My question is that if you're comparing the two prophets and you compare their status according to their responsibility and you give Muhammad peace be upon him a higher responsibility and a higher status then why is it that he died just like you and I and is buried under the ground while Jesus lives and is raised and is lived and he comes back and he's a responsibility to lead the Muslims who had gone astray who are the followers of Prophet Muhammad and lead them to a total victory which Muhammad could not achieve in his time. 
Our brother, before you go, are you asking as a Muslim or as a Christian? Muslims, but it doesn't matter really. It does matter because then I can give you proofs according to your background, your experience and mentality. You see, you are confusing, you have confused the Muslim idea with the Christian idea where you said and sitting on the right hand of God. I want to know where you got that from. From the house of Islam or from Christianity? From elders of Islam. From? From elders of Islam. I haven't read, but I, from the elders of Islam. No elder of the Muslim tell you that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God. Unfortunately, there are some who do so. Well, that me look. <laughs> okay. All right. You have, you have All right. made your point, because that is incorrect. Can you correct it? Right. right. Number one, we do not believe that Christ died. We believe that he was not crucified. Videotapes and books are available on the subject. Crucifixion or crucifixion. Whether it was a fiction, F-I-C-T-I-U-N fiction, F-I-C-F-I-X-I-U-N fiction, means to fix up a person on the cross and kill him, or was it F-I-C-T-I-U-N fiction, means a fairy tale. And according to the Quranic teaching, when Allah says, Illa tiba zan, they only follow conjecture, guesswork, fiction. We prove in this book from the Christian Bible, the whole story is a fiction. And if you can get any bishop, if you can organize an Anglican bishop or an archbishop to have this thing debated with me, we are prepared to hire the NEC at our expense. And we will give you 10,000 pounds in the bargain. If you can get any Anglican or Roman Catholic bishop or archbishop to debate this subject with us in NEC Birmingham, which is the largest covered hall in Europe, we are prepared to organize that meeting at our expense and give you 10,000 pounds pounds in the bargain. With regards to <laughs> with regards to people waiting for Jesus and make to come and make the masters of the world, you see the Christ the Bible tells us that Jesus is coming for a special purpose. And that purpose is found in the Gospel of St. Matthew. He says that on that day, on that day, the second coming Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name do many mighty works? Then Jesus says, then will I profess unto them, I will tell them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, get away from me, I don't even know you. Now, that is his purpose. People who have misunderstood him, they started worshipping him as Lord, as God, instead of the Father in heaven. So he is coming to rectify them. I'm not waiting for Jesus. I don't need anything at all. Whatever Allah wanted to give, he's given it to me. Here, in the Quran. The he can't come and teach the Muslims that, you know, Maghrib you make three rakats, make it four. He can't come to teach us, you fasting for 30 days, you fast for 40. There's nothing he can teach us. The Muslim has, as Allah tells in the Quran, a deen which is absolutely complete. As Allah says, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenukum. This day I have perfected for your religion. Wa atmamtu alaykum na'mati. And have completed my favors unto you. Wa raditu lakum al islam adina. And have willed that Islam should be your religion. Everything that Allah wanted to give has given it to us and we have it and I am not waiting for Jesus nor do I expect any Muslim to wait for Jesus or for anybody else to help him out in guiding himself to the way of Allah. A little extension of the last question, which was a long while ago, but I won't repeat it, um, is that I want you to just give me your response to this. You say that.